The aftermath of the earthquake left the capital Port-au-Prince shattered. Thousands of people living in tent camps and aid organizations scrambling to assist Haitians already burdened with poverty, now burdened with a city in ruins. When uh, I heard about the earthquake and uh, I was on my way back from work and when I get home and I remember it was my uh, son's 16th birthday and uh, we went to pizza and start celebrating and then after when we get to uh, the cake part and then I heard the phone rung and then clang and so I said, so, so, it's my niece. And she said, you don't hear what happened in Haiti? I said, what happened? I just got home and said, oh, the earthquake. I said, oh my God. Eileen Dehi is an immigrant from Haiti who's come to raise her family in America. What are we going to do? And then I, when I, and we stopped the celebration. And then uh, all of us stopped. We, we couldn't continue. And then uh, I... Uh, tried to call my sister in Haiti, and she didn't answer. Luckily, my niece answered the phone and said, hey, we're here, we're all right. And then I said, oh my God, this is the whole Haiti went down. And then, you know, I feel, we feel, I feel awful about it, you know, couldn't eat and stuff like that, and feel sad about it. Cadenard Raymond is a foreign service officer and a first-generation American of Haitian descent. Unfortunately, I think the Haitian government's response has been limited. Um, they are limited by their capacity. They don't have a lot of authority. They don't have a lot of resources, so there wasn't a lot that they can do. The, the, Haitian, government, the, the Haitian government, they didn't respond you know, the way they should. Because to me, I mean, after three, four months, they shouldn't, you know, sleep under the tent. The government Haiti should be able to build something, you know, to for them to be able to sleep in and stuff like that. But the Haitian government didn't do anything. It's, it's really, it's not a good government. My mother's house is not good at all. It's not habitable. Nobody can live there because it's cracked all over the house. So they had to sleep under the tent, you know, for more than four, five months. They, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what they do because they're afraid to go inside the house. The Haitian earthquake has been called the worst urban disaster in modern history. Well, first, I think it's affected my family um, pretty negatively. Uh, we lost family members in the earthquake. And so that was pretty devastating. Um, as a Haitian community, we're all affected. And we're just constantly hoping and praying that our country, you know, is reconstructed and is growing and getting better. Um, and then positively, I think that we're all more united and we're more aware of what Haiti needs and how we can help them. All we are waiting for now, waiting for uh, a better government because this government is not doing anything for them. So we we'll hope in the future something will be done for the Haitian people. Uh, I think the U.S. government's response has been stellar. I think that they were really good at getting on the ground quickly. I think that they recognize the responsibility that they have to helping Haiti. And so, um, first of all, just because of the history of the relationship and because they're so close, um, they made sure to be there and to give the most. And so I think they've, they've had a good response so far. And I think the international community has had a good response. Um, it can always be better. There are always issues of coordination and transparency. But um, I think so far, you know, we're hopeful. Opinions on the success of the U.S. involvement in the earthquake relief vary significantly. As I said, I heard they're giving some water and some stuff, some food. Say, what food? We don't know about that thing. We, 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 we don't know. We, we don't get anything. You know, because whenever U.S. said something like that in Haiti, like food and water, something like that, not everybody got it. I think my perspective is slightly different working for the government because I realize how long 
things take and how um, patient you have to be when getting things done. Um, our society is very, um, we have a short attention span sometimes. Things need to be done and they need to be done quickly. And when you're working with a government bureaucracy, it just doesn't work that way. Things take time and they take a lot of negotiation on a lot of different ends. So um, I think that's something that I know to be true for development processes as well. So Haiti and you know rebuilding and developing, like that's something that's gonna take a lot of time. It was gonna take a lot of time before the earthquake and especially after. Going to Haiti before the earthquake, um, Haiti has always been underdeveloped. This is not something that's new. Haiti has always had um, bad infrastructure. It hasn't really had like a formal um, economy. And so you kind of get this developing country feel when you're in Haiti. And then after the earthquake, um, I guess immediately after the earthquake, it was probably a lot more difficult for people to deal with because there's rubble everywhere. At one point, there were dead bodies everywhere. Um, but I went to Haiti in August, which at that point had been some seven months after the earthquake. And although there's still rubble in the streets, people have moved on. It's, there's, a, there's a sense of you know, we're going to get through this and there's a resiliency that Haitian people have. So it wasn't, it wasn't that palpable, the difference. Um, there's a lot more people from other countries there now. There's a lot more people from different organizations in the U.S. and in the international community. So I think um, one of the biggest changes is all the attention that's given to Haiti right now. Um, my name is El Kani Diada, and my mom's um, 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 uh, um, from Haiti. El Kani Diada is a first generation American of Haitian descent. He is five years old. He went to Haiti to assist in the relief efforts for the children of Haiti. Um, uh, I was at Haiti, uh, and, and, and I was said, um, uh, Unwrap the present for the kids. I think that the culture of Haiti can't really be affected by anything, not even something as huge as an earthquake, because Haitian people are very resilient people. Our culture, our music, our dance, our art, this, these are things that lasted through dictatorships through extreme poverty, through hurricanes, through mudslides, and it's not something that's gonna go away. It's actually something that we hold on to even tighter after disasters and after these extenuating circumstances. So um, if anything, I just feel like it's gotten, it's gotten stronger and it's become more important to Haitians themselves to, to hold on to it. And this is Ella Weiner for School Without Walls News.